Hello and welcome back to Strathpeffer Junction. Today I am going to do a little video on uh, Hornby's Class 31. It's their super detail version in Regional Railways livery and it's uh, the North Yorkshire Moors Railway is, is the name of this particular loco. Um, what I'm going to do is a, a kind of two part video really. Um, firstly, this particular model um, has a bit of a history of uh, developing less smooth running characteristics uh, as, as it gets older and, and used. Sometimes that seems to be down to wear, uh, sometimes it's down to the, the fan mechanism that Hornby for a, a short period installed in, in some of their locomotives. So we're going to have a look at that, uh, see what the problem is and see if we can fix it. Secondly, um, I have bought a TTS sound decoder from Hornby uh, in class 31. Um, I tend to go for lock sound decoders, um, but in some of the locomotives that I use less frequently, I like to have sound in them um, to make them a little bit more interesting, uh, but I, I can't really justify paying the, the lock sound prices. So I have a few locos with TTS decoders and I find them perfectly acceptable for what they are if you just want simple running characteristics from a simple decoder with some sound. So we're going to look at uh, installing the TTS sound in this model um, one, once we've had a look at, at it improving its running. Um, and also um, I will probably substitute the, the stock speaker that comes with the, the TTS decoders with one that's slightly better. Uh, now we are restricted with, with room inside this locomotive to an extent so it's not going to be a, an all singing all dancing speaker upgrade but we'll, we'll see what we can do to, to improve things. So I'll pop the speaker to one side um, and uh, I shall reveal the, the locomotive which is sitting underneath here. Um, so that, that's the locomotive. It's, it's really a lovely model. Um, it's not that easy to get these days. Uh, so uh, anyway, let's crack on and have a look at the, the running issues first of all. So here we are. Here's the locomotive. Uh, it's in reasonably good condition. There was a, a few issues with it uh, which I've, I've subsequently sorted. But it's nice. Uh, it runs it runs okay, fairly well in terms of smoothness, um, forward and back, but it has an awful rattle to it when it gets up to higher speeds. Now, as I mentioned before, that, this has been mentioned once or twice in some of the, the forums out there. Uh, some people seem to have better or worse experiences in terms of resolving it. But uh, having taken the top off this already, I'm pretty sure the problem with this one is down to the, the fan mechanism. Now, for those of you who haven't come across Hornby's fan mechanism. Um, it looks nice, the fan turns when the, the loco goes, but it, it, it really does add extra strain to the, the drive mechanism. So most people take it off, um, which is exactly what we're going to be doing today. Okay, so before we crack on and take the, the body off and have a look at what's going on with the locomotive itself inside, I thought I'd just give a little demonstration of what the actual problem is. Um, so you can hear it for yourself and see it for yourself. So I've got it on the little rolling road, it's the DC rolling road here, uh, and let's have a little look and see how we get on. So we've got some movement here. The fan's turning in the top, although you won't be able to see it. It's not too bad for a locomotive that's been stored for a while, but as we crank up the speed, there's a bit of hesitancy kicks in. and then some rattling and a high speed squeal. Now I can see that this is coming from this side of the locomotive. So there are the drive wheels here, but there's also the fan mechanism on the top. So having had a little look before, I'm pretty sure that it's to do with the fan mechanism. So that's what I'm going to have a look at first. I'm going to get the lid off, have a look under the bonnet, uh, and we're going to see whether removing the fan mechanism helps to get rid of this noise. Okay, so we're going to start by removing the body from the chassis. Um, now, every locomotive is a little bit different, but actually the, the Class 31 is one of the, the more straightforward ones. Um, you need to get yourself a, a fairly small uh, flathead screwdriver, but not the smallest. And if you then turn over the locomotive, you'll see that under each of the bogies, there is a flathead screw here and here, and the same on this side, here and here. 
Now, if you undo these, sometimes they may come out, sometimes they might get inhibited by the bogies, but if you undo those, loosen them off, um, then that's all you need to do in terms of uh, removing the fixings that hold the body on. This particular locomotive doesn't have any detailing front or back, but do make sure that if there's anything that, that hooks over the chassis from the body that you remove that so you don't damage it when you're pulling it apart. But anyway, having done that, we can carefully ease the body off. Um, it will probably come off fairly easily on this locomotive. The cabs are a little bit loose, so just watch that when they come out. But anyway, there we have it. We've got the body and we've got the chassis. Now I've popped the body onto uh, a little bit of foam or the, the Pico servicing cradle, I should say. We're going to pop this to one side just for the time being uh, and focus onto the, the chassis itself. Um, now, I think what I'll do is pop it on the rolling road in just a little moment, just to, to show the, the issues again, but with the body removed. But uh, on this particular model, we've got the, the Hornby PCB here. Really, the only, the only use that this has is connecting the various wires up and routing them to where they need to go. And also in DC running, there are bridge rectifiers and diodes and so on in here and the resistors uh, for the lights. So it has less of a use for DCC. Um, but for DCC, that's that's where it all goes on. Here we've got the, uh, the spinning fan, the nice touch, which really was a bit of a failure in all honesty. Um, it uh, comes straight off uh, the, the motor assembly below through a small dry belt. Now, I think this is what the issue is. So I, I'm, I'm going to remove this and hope that that cures the, the, the noise issues that we have and the poor running characteristics. But also, this section here is where I would like to, to install the speaker. Uh, for the, the TTS sound, so we need this space in any case. So this would still still have to come out, uh, even if there wasn't an issue. So I'll pop it back onto the rolling road now. We can have another quick look at the issues with the running and the performance, uh, and then after that we'll, we'll crack on to getting our hands dirty and trying to sort it out. Okay, so we've got the chassis mounted onto the rolling road. Uh, and we're going to take it for a wee spin and see if we can recreate the problems that we've been experiencing with the noise and the running, the poor performance. So you can see here as the motor turns, the drive belt here turns and the fan turns. And the faster we go, the more noise and reverberation verber uh, we, can, we can see up here. And then we get into the high speed noise. Now in reality we probably wouldn't be having the motor working this much, certainly not on my proposed layout, but it's still a little bit of an issue so we'll need to get it sorted. Okay, so the next stage is to remove the, the drive belt section of the fan assembly. Um, it's probably the most uh, destructive part of this bit of the, the video actually, because um, once we've cut this we can't get it back on again, but we don't need it on again so we'll take it off and we'll lay it to one side there. So what this has done now is released the, the, the fan assembly from the actual drive motor. Now ordinarily I would use my little jeweler screwdrivers for the next step but these, uh, these screws here have been screwed incredibly tight and I just can't get the torque required. So I've got a little ratchet screwdriver which has a head that is just, just the right size. So we'll, we'll crack on and remove these screws and set these to one side in case we need them again in due course. There's one. There's two. Okay, so that's the four screws out. One, two, three, four. Um, and then the fan assembly itself just lifts there we go, off the top in one part and we can set that to the side. And what that does now is it exposes the, the drive shaft, the worm gear, the, the top of the bogies and the assembly there. Um, and we'll pop this back onto the, the rolling road just to double check that that has resolved the, the issue that we were experiencing. Okay, so we're back at the rolling road. As I said before, we've got the loco locked on, ready to rock. Um, so let's apply a little bit of power uh, and see how we get on.
So it's, it's running relatively smoothly. I can see here, looking in at the worm gear, there's a little bit of grub, a bit of dirt and gunk built up there. So I think I'll clean that off and I think that'll probably resolve just the, the last few uh, bits of hesitancy there. But let's get it up to higher speed and see how it's performing and see if we can hear that, that high-pitched high squeal. Fabulous. No sign of the squeal at all. That's it completely gone. It's running really, really nicely, really smoothly at this speed. So certainly in the case of this locomotive, the issue with that high pitched squeal was indeed this little fan assembly. So we can take this and we can chuck it in the bin. Okay, so now that we've got a chassis which is free of the fan assembly, we can move on to preparing the TTS chip and then installing the TTS chip. So what I'm going to do is uh, have a look at what we get in the pack here. So I'll just move the chassis to the side for one minute. So the TTS decoder is a, it's a simple decoder. Um, it's based on the, the basic Hornby decoder, not their, their Sapphire, but the basic one. So it has limited functionality, but the sound can still be reasonably good. Uh, and if all you're wanting is a little bit of noise to accompany your uh, running a train around the layout, then, then this will be ideal for that. So let's see what you get in the box. So we've got the decoder itself, uh, and this one comes with the the new type of speaker. Um, the older TTS decoders used to come with a, the circular speaker, um, but this one now comes with, uh, it looks like a, a probably just under 20 by 40 uh, TTS speaker there, and that, that'll be an 8 ohm one. Um, we also get just some general blurb from Hornby, telling you what you should and shouldn't do in terms of 8 ohm speakers with a TTS decoder and all that. Uh, and then we've got the manual as well, itself. Now this uh, this tells you what all the different functions, the CV functions, do uh, on this decoder. So uh, definitely want to hang on to it and have a look at it. But we'll set that to one side. Okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, crack on and open up the packaging uh, and see what it is that we, we get inside with this decoder. Um, the decoder itself is pretty standard. They, they all look the same, the TTS decoders. But I'm more interested in finding out what this speaker is like. So we get some mounting screws here, which we may or may not use. We have the decoder in the, uh, the static bag, and then we have the speaker here itself. Now, it looks to me like it's probably one of these standard speakers, maybe even the same kind that you get with a lock sound. Yeah, it has a plastic cone, which isn't the best, but what we'll do anyway is we'll give this a shot on uh, my... Um, my decoder tester, see what it sounds like, check everything's working, all the functions, and then we'll decide from there whether we keep this speaker or whether we replace it. Okay, so I've dug out my ESU DCC chip tester here. This is the, the old version from the Locksound 3.5 era with the 100 ohm speaker. Uh, so it works absolutely fine with lock sound 3.5, it works absolutely fine with lock sound 4, uh, lock pilot 4 and the newer generation decoders which are non-sound. If you're looking at a, a lock sound 4 with the sound, um, it will still work, it's just because it's a 100 ohm speaker it'll be incredibly quiet. It, it, is, it is passable, although not recommended and it certainly wouldn't be any good in a layout, but it's passable to use a lock sound 4 with a 100 ohm speaker. It would just be very quiet, but you must never use a lock sound 3.5 or earlier with a, a 4 or 8 ohm speaker because that will probably damage the chip beyond further use. Anyway, so the way this works is we put in our DCC power in here and um, we hook up the, the DCC decoder either through the 8 pin socket or the 21 pin socket and then we can test the various functions, the motor, uh, the various auxiliaries, the lights and if there was sound, uh, the sound could come through there or in the case of the TTS speaker, the sound will come out of its own speaker because it's hardwired. So I'll get the, the chip fixed up onto the test board and then we can test it. So I've hooked up the decoder to the 8-pin socket. 
We have the speaker here, which I'm keeping well apart from any other parts of the circuitry to avoid any shorting. One thing that I would say that I don't really like about the, the TTS decoders is that they do come without any kind of protective covering, um, which can make them really susceptible to shorting if you're not careful where you put them on the locomotive. So I'll do it later on, and I always recommend that you cover the decoder in a layer of Kapton tape before you install it anywhere, just so that you don't destroy it through any shorting. The other thing that I've noticed on this particular one, um, and I don't know if this is going to be standard across all of their range, uh, but the, the, the soldering, the quality of the soldering, the workmanship on this plug here is pretty terrible. Um, there's a one or two wires there which are just a whisker away from shorting. So it is something to watch out for on some of these, these lower end decoders is just to, to check the solder joints the same at the, uh, the decoder end here just to make sure there's nothing that's going to come loose and short uh, and ruin the decoder. Okay, so it's time to apply some power to the, the test rig that we've got here. As I mentioned before, it comes in from the DCC controller through these grey cables. So I'll just apply some power. As soon as we do that, we've got two green lights that come on here to show that we've got the, the track voltage coming in. What I will do first is to test the, the motions of forward and reverse. So we've got some good forward motion there. We've got some good reverse motion there. Uh, let's try the lights now. So we've got the reverse light on here and if we change direction, we've got the front light on there as well, the headlights. Uh, now this decoder uh, tester also allows you to test all of the auxiliary functions. The only problem is that I'm using my, uh, my Z21 at the moment with the multi-mouse handset which unfortunately only goes up to, to 20 functions on the handset, although if you're using the, uh, the, the iPad or the Android connectivity, then you can use all the functions it has. Um, unfortunately, with the TTS decoders, just looking at the manual here, uh, the auxiliary function is on function 25, so I can't test that through the setup, but I've no doubt that it will work. Um, what I'll be using that for is to, to use for the cab lights um, which aren't installed, but I will probably install in a future project. Um, so for the time being, I don't need it, but uh, in, in due course, I will use that function for cab lights. Anyway, on to the moment that we've all been waiting for. Does the TTS sound work? Well, let's see. So it does indeed. It's actually, for that speaker, it's not too bad. It's a little bit tinny, um, but it's okay. I think that would be improved by the ceiling enclosure. Okay, so we've established that the chip works. Uh, the sound is reasonable. I'll have a look and see if I've got a, a speaker that I think would do a better job uh, given the, the space constraints that we, we have in the chassis. Um, but we might leave it as it is actually because the speaker really isn't that bad. Um, but we will need to, to seal up the enclosure first. Okay, I'm back. I've had a good ferret around my collection of speakers uh, and I think that actually what I'm going to do just now is to leave the the stock speaker in, in in situ. It's actually not too bad a sound for what it is, and I think we'll get a, an improvement on the base if we, we seal in round the enclosure with black tack. So I'm going to leave this for now. I may in future upgrade to uh, a, another option, um, but we do have a relatively limited amount of space to play with here. Um, so I'll, I'll need to have a look and see if it warrants a new speaker, and if it does, what would fit in. What I'm going to do first, however, is to address the potential shorting issue by applying a layer of Captain tape around the, the DCC decoder just to make sure that we, we don't have any problems with it uh, knocking off part of the, the circuitry within the, the loco itself. So we don't need loads of, of Captain tape here, but we do need enough to make sure that it is, uh, it's well protected that it's not going to short anywhere 
and that we can sleep, sleep soundly at, at a night. Well, it always seems to be the case that uh, fitting DCC sound into these small locomotives can be a little bit of a, a Krypton factor challenge. Um, in this particular one, fitting the, the speaker in and the decoder, uh, bearing in mind the, the, the space that we've got between the PCB and the, the top of the, the body, is actually quite tight. So I think what I'm going to do is there is a space underneath the, the PCB here, which has got good clearance between the, the flywheel and the PCB. So I'm going to mount the, spe the, the decoder rather underneath there with some Kapton tape. It will not fall off with that. And then I'm going to mount the speaker itself where we removed the, the, um, the fan assembly from. There is a small screw hole which I'll be able to use to fix down one side of the speaker cabinet. And then the other side I can just use a wee blob of black tack just to hold that in the right place. So what I'm going to do first of all is to make the speaker assembly enclosure airtight. Once I've done that we can mount the, the DCC decoder underneath the PCB here. Then we can mount the speaker, wire it all up and give it a wee test run. Okay, so I'm going to use some black tack as I mentioned to, to seal the speaker enclosure. You don't need a huge amount which is probably just as well <laughs> given I've only got a small amount left. But I'm just going to pull off a little bit here and just roll it up into a sausage shape. So you don't need very much along the side. It really is just enough to, to fill the gaps, but also make sure that you don't inhibit the movement of the speaker. See, so you don't want to get any of the black tack on the speaker itself. So what I'm going to do is roll this up into a little sausage, apply it along there, and we'll come back when we finish that step. So I have used black tack along three sides here. Um, I've just sealed the air gap best that you can. Black tack's very effective. It's quite hard to use sometimes, it's sticky, but it is very effective for this. Now what I need to do on this fourth and final side is to fill the gap just below where the, the wires come out and then the gap just above where they come out and then along the side. So I'm just going to do that now and we'll come back when that's done. So that's the, the black tacking done. We've got the three sides done. We've got the cable entry point all sealed up and the, the top part there. So I'll bring the chassis back in now, and now we can turn our attention to attaching the chip itself to the underside of the PCB. So I've positioned the speaker in roughly the, the position that we want. We've got just enough um, wire here to get the, the decoder to where we want it to be underneath the PCB. That might be a little tight depending how much wire Hornby are generous enough to give you so you may need to solder on a small extension to those wires but for the purposes of this install we've got just about enough wire to play with. So I'm going to use the Kapton tape to fix this underneath up round so it doesn't come off and then we'll move on to the next stage. So when I say the next stage, I thought actually I should probably show you just this little step on how, I, how I'm going to get it through. It can be a little bit fiddly, you could take the PCB off and do it, but I don't think that's necessary, I'm going to leave it in, in its place. So I'm just going to slip some tweezers through, feed through the Kapton tape, get the decoder to where we want it, which is there, and then fold it up over, and over the top there. And we've got just about enough cable there to get us back to where we need to be with the plug. So I'll put another wind of Captain tape on just to be on the safe side. Then we'll get it plugged in and tested. Now, just before we're at the stage to test anything, we need to remove the blanking plate and install the, the actual plug from the decoder itself. So the blanking plate itself is really very easy. It just pulls out like that. The, uh, the decoder, um, 21 pin uh, decoders are dead easy because they only go in way round. Uh, the 8-pin ones, it is possible to put it in the wrong way around. But Hornby, actually I think they're maybe the only manufacturer do, but Hornby very kindly put a number 1 at the, the socket for the number 1. Uh, and the number 1 on these 8-pin sockets is the orange, so we just need to make sure that the orange pin, which is this one here, uh, goes into socket 1, and then we're good to go. There we are. So that's the decoder in nice and snugly. We've got the speaker in here too. Before we can move on to testing actually, what I will do with the speaker is I will reapply one of the screws that we took out from the uh, 
the fan assembly into one of the little lugs here which will hold it in and then on the other side I'll apply just a tiny bit of black tack just to hold the, the lug down on the other side so that it, it doesn't move about. Not that I think it will but just to be on the safe side. The one thing that we do need to, to note though is that there is a, a slight difference in um, in thickness of the, the chassis here and here so I'll cut a, a little shim out of plastic card just to, to pop across underneath so that when we're tightening down that screw everything lines up properly. So I'll cut the plastic card out and come back in just a second for fitting it. Okay so I have a little bit of plastic card cut here. What I'm going to do is just use a, a tiny bit of uh, super glue, just some very small dabs of it um, just to, to hold it in place. It's not going to go anywhere once the, uh, the chassis uh, has had the speaker screwed down to it. Um, but uh, just to be on the safe side, belt and braces and all that, we'll, we'll pop a, a tiny, tiny little bit of super glue just in place there, just to hold it in. Excellent. I'm always a wee bit scared to use super glue around uh, locomotives just in case you, you slip and, uh, and cover your, your locomotive body in the glue but uh, anyway we seem to have got away with it this time. So I'm just going to use the uh, small set of uh, forceps here or tweezers just to line it up. There we go. And that's in the right place. Now there's also some black tack here as well that I notice uh, a previous owner has probably used to uh, to hold these little wires in place so um, I think that's going to do a a good job of just holding things in the, the right position as well. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. Right, so we can move on to getting the speaker into its new home. So with the plastic card glued in place we can pop the speaker on top just line it up with the holes and then if it helps if I get the right type of screwdriver we can then screw in the screw into the, the threaded hole left from where the, the fan assembly was and once we're in there there we are, that's in good and tight, excellent so that's the speaker now in place we'll pop a wee, a wee bit of black tack just on this side here to stop it moving around other than that, that's pretty much the, uh, the electrics install completed. So just before I pop the lid on again, um, I'm going to just quickly test that, that everything is still working as we expect. One thing to mention is, normally I would pop a little bit of Captain tape over the, the, the wires from the decoder uh, to the, the, the plug, uh, just to keep them in place, but while it would look neater, um, this uh, there's enough tension here in the, in the wires without pulling too hard but enough to keep them from flopping down so they're not going to get in the way. Uh, the same with the, the speaker the speaker wires here which are which are just right uh, and dandy. So we will get the rolling road out, I'll hook it up to the DCC controller this time and we'll double check that everything's working and assuming it is we can get, to, get on to putting the, the body back together. Okay so we're back at the rolling road I've given it uh, a, a run through its paces forward and backwards. We're working fine, and we'll just give a, a, a quick a quick test of the sound just to make sure that's that's working as expected. Great, so, uh, so everything is as expected. So we can move on now to the, the next stage, which is just putting back the body and then giving it a quick whiz on the test track. So the body's back on, still on the test track, so let's just check that sound one last time. Oh, and before we do, I'll just quickly check the directional lights. So yes, I've got the reverse rear lights, forward light and the head code. And if we go the other way, we've got the head codes and we've got the, yes, we've got the headlight and we've got the resource light. So the, the lights are working as expected as well. And we've still got sound, which is always good. 
So the sound is actually not too bad in this locomotive with the stock speaker. It could be a bit bassier, but I think really we're quite pushed for room and we, we might be struggling. But I'll keep an eye out and see if we can get a better speaker for the future. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with this and uh, it's been quite a good, a, a good little project. We've sorted a problem, we've uh, installed some sound and we've got a lovely little regional railways class 31 to use on the layout. Right, one thing that I meant to, to, to mention while I was actually doing the installation in the original parts of the videos was that when I first tested the locomotive on the test track, it actually, despite what I had said, it ran like a bag of nails. Now, what I forgot to mention was that uh, this is often the case with TTS decoders. That there are two different profiles for the motor for the way that the decoder feeds power to the motor. It comes default as profile zero, but what you often find, and I think it's particularly the case when you're using um, a, a super detail version of say the Class 30 with the, the, the better quality motor, not the pancake style motor, is that you need to change it to profile number one. So the way you do this is you read CV150, and if that is reading zero, then you change it to one. So you change CV150 to one. Now that's normally all you need to do, but if you need to further tweak things, then if you follow the instructions that, that come with the TTS decoders, it explains to you how you can then further tweak and customize the, the CV settings for that particular profile. But anyway, um, that's what I did. I changed CV150 to one and it runs fabulously, really smooth in both directions, far better than it did on DC actually, and it's a real joy. Okay, so there we have it. It's been a, a lovely little project actually. We've solved the problem. We've got some nice TTS sound in this loco. It's only taken about half an hour. It hasn't taken many tools. We didn't even need the, the soldering iron which I had here next to me um, because we, we didn't ultimately need to change the speaker. So thank you very much for watching. If you've got any comments, if you've got any questions or any suggestions, please do let me know. If you would do something differently, let me know as well. But uh, until next time, thanks very much for watching. Cheerio!